Hello, hello. Thank you so much for watching Career Conversations. I'm your host, Unika Walcott, and today's guest brings some sweet nostalgia to the mix. She is a former physical therapist turned nostalgic candy maker. I'd like to welcome to the show, Crystal Regeer Westergaard. Thank you so much for being a part of the show, Crystal. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. I, I have really fond memories myself of like traveling to Canada as a kid and got some of my own favorite candy. So when I learned about your company, I was like, we got a dog. <laughs> and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what your family thinks you do when you tell them you're a nostalgic can candy maker. I, th I think they think that I, I physically, with these fingers, make the chocolate which I do not do. Um, <laughs> we, we played around with some recipes when we got the idea. And um, we took a little class in how to make bonbons. But uh, we have a factory that we've uh, contracted that actually turns the bars out at enough speed that they can come out at a, at a sum of money per bar that people can actually afford to have. <laughs> That makes sense. I couldn't imagine if you had to hand make the candy bar yourself, it would probably be like $20 a bar <laughs> or something insane. It, it would have to be because <laughs> I might as well be doing physical therapy then. <laughs> so your family thinks that you hand make these bars. What do you actually do? As oh, I actually still work as a physical therapist in my clinic. Oh, cool. Actually. Physic well, that's what my, my human body goes and does. And then in minutes between patients, I run this um, candy company. Yeah. Wow. So did you ever imagine you'd be running a candy company? Gosh, no. No, that is... No. <laughs> I was not... No, candy was not considered something enough of substance to know. Gosh, no, I came from a family that was very straight laced. I was the oldest child. I was oh. to go to university. I was to have a proper career. Yeah, no. Yeah, Gosh. I can relate. It's like the oldest child, like all the pressures, like you got to do good and you got to set an example for your siblings. And if you don't, then then we're going to kind of almost disown you. <laughs> well, not well, literally. Kind of, yeah. Not really literally, but like there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's, it's in there. <laughs> Somehow that seed is planted. <laughs> So I, I I did go off and I did become a physical therapist and um, I practiced uh, in the U.S. and then uh, I practiced here in Canada and then uh, you know what they say people don't quit positions they quit people oh. so when I got a manager here um, at my job at my local hospital that was so mean I thought good grief oh. like only my own clinic can't be worse than this with all the stress. So I started my own clinic at that point. Wow. And um, I've done that for years and I still love to do that. It's very fulfilling to be a physical therapist. I recommend it to anyone. Um, but the other just kind of came along and bit me on the butt, the other career. So it kind of found wow. me. Shall I, shall I tell you how that went down. Yeah. I'm like, how did, how did the, the candy making find you? Yeah. Well, I, my mom wound up going in nursing care, which is super hard for anyone to go through. And I, it's mother's day when we're filming this. I don't know when people will see it, but yeah. it's really hard. Um, she went into care because she did not take her daughter's advice about her health which you learn in healthcare is your parents don't listen to you anyway, because they're just, you're just their kid. Mm -hmm. and, you know? <laughs> uh, so it's really hard visiting her at the nursing home. And I, um, you know, you try to think she has dementia, so she can't think of things to say. So it's all on me. And so eventually you ran out of things to do and say and gifts to bring. And uh, so one day I was treating this patient and she owns our local dollar store. And she was saying, you know, what's hot is these old time candy bars. And uh, in Canada, we call them chocolate bars. And I said, oh, yeah. I said, my mom, she's got a favorite pop bar from when she was a kid. Um, it's called Cuban Lunch. 
Oh, you can't find that anymore, Kathy says. You can't find that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can find that from my mother. Mm -hmm. Like like, anything for mom, yeah. Yeah, I can do it for my mother. Don't challenge me like that. Heck, yeah. So I go online. I'm going to find that chocolate bar. So it's a rectangle of chocolate with peanuts in it. It harkens back to the Spanish-American War, actually, when uh, the soldiers were given rectangles of chocolate uh, to eat as rations, and they would, um, it's the Spanish-American War, so they'd be in Cuba in before World War I, even, and they would call these the Cuban lunches. So the name of this rectangular chocolate bar is Cuban lunch, and it, uh, it sits in a cup kind of like a Reese's except it's a red cup and uh this was my mother's favorite chocolate bar all her life my dad says he instead of bringing her flowers he'd bring her one of these chocolate bars oh this is like a true favorite like when you prefer it over flowers yes yes (laughs) so um I looked and looked and looked online and all I found was other people like me looking and looking online (laughs) so I'm like okay (laughs) Everybody wants, and there's a community of people, like thousands of people want this chocolate bar back. Like, really? With all the quirky foods that people are inventing nowadays, why isn't someone just bringing this chocolate bar back? Right. So, um, I guess we learned why not, because then we decided we would try to bring it back. You got to explain why you learned why not, though. Like, what was the, what was the process like? Well, um, we came up with what we thought was a good recipe because I'd eaten this thing over the years. We, we bought the rights to it, which the previous company had dumped because they decided that it was it was bought out by companies so far east that they didn't realize there were so many people that ate it and that people were going peanut free factories and they dumped it. Wow. So uh, we bought the rights to it. And then when we went shopping for factories to make it for us, we ran into the peanut free thing. Um, Modern factory machines do not squirt out peanuts amidst the chocolate goo. Um, Hmm. Not made to do that. So they were really, and they don't put things in little cups. Um, So even if you see knockoffs of Reese's, you'll notice they've got a cup shape, but there is no actual physical cup. Yeah. The only one that still has a physical cup is Reese's and us. So oh, it was wow. extraordinarily hard to get that <laughs> crazy paper cup um, sourced. It's a rectangle. So we had to pay the, the stamper at the metal paper factory to make this stamp. And it was like $15,000. I kid you not. For a stamp. Yes. That's made of a hard enough metal that it can do thousands and thousands and thousands. And now, years later, millions of these cups. So That's a hefty investment. Yeah. And I said, wow, that's kind of a shut up and get lost kind of price, I said. But we're not going to shut up and get lost. (laughs) (laughs) We're serious. So, yes, we had to come up with that cup. We had to find factory that could pass peanuts through the spouts we finally just paid for new spout openings to be drilled um, uh, for that factory and then they yes they made we we didn't know how many to make we drained our savings and we made sixty thousand chocolate bars the first go at it which i thought was a lot um but they were just gone in a few weeks a few weeks yeah People wow. really did want this chocolate bar. Like, <laughs> um, clearly, like you probably have people order them a thousand at a time for themselves and not for their store. <laughs> well, certainly hundreds at a time for themselves. Yeah. And, wow. uh, but the stores had bought them all from us anyway. So, people, yes, people, there's another thing people think I do. They think that I sit around all day and do fulfillment and. Uh-huh. I, I don't. And when, when we make a shipment of the chocolate bars, of course, they're in boxes that are in boxes. They're in boxes. And those big boxes go on a semi trailer. And then, say, Safeway might buy that semi trailer or a co op might buy that semi trailer load full of chocolate bars. 
and they go off to their warehouse for them to distribute to their stores. Oh, so wow. I don't, um, I don't uh, do much in the way of uh, fulfillment. Um, we do a little more nowadays than we did at first, just because it's, it's a nice customer facing interaction with fans. But yeah, for people to see who makes the chocolate, where does this come from? Where, what is the story behind it? Which is really, really a sweet story. Like you said, look, up, my mom is struggling with dementia. I want her to have something that she loves that she's loved for a long time. And she did love it when we did bring it to her. <laughs> All that later, she did love it. She and did. she didn't remember her, um, she didn't remember her favorite color anymore or her birthday, but she didn't remember her favorite chocolate. So there's an insight into the female mind. <laughs> yep. Oh my God! I'm, well, I'm a little teary eyed myself at the thought. I, I lost my grandfather about two years ago to to, to dementia, so I, I get how it, it changes a person a lot. So it's super impressive to remember her chocolate. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And she broke a tooth on it one day, and the two care attendants who happened to be in the room were like, "Oh wow!" You could tell they were like, "Oh, good thing it was when the daughter gave it to her." <laughs> So I, I took a picture of the tooth that we'd broken off because she has her own teeth, even though she's in her 80s. Wow. So, um, like, okay, <laughs> back to softer things uh, in the moment. Woo. Sure enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, that, that's amazing. She's 80. She remembers her chocolate and she loves it. Like, that's beautiful. Yeah. So was that the motivation to keep going when they told you it's $15,000? <laughs> To, to, to make a, a stamp or to... Oh, gosh. Well, and that, and people kept, like, people wanted it so badly that they kept ordering it. So the 60000 were gone promptly and um, with lots of orders for more. So we um, asked them to make more. And, of course, there's a matter of getting enough little papers made to make more. So if you I had my first panic attack I've ever had during that point in my life. Oh, wow. uh, so that was pre-COVID and I had my first panic attack ever. <laughs> yeah, that was awful. Just try every time they try to make the stamp press, it would break. So, uh, and then a patient comes into the clinic and he had this big hole in his hand. And so you're really up close with this patient and he's sharing how this nephew of his, who was a physical therapist, who I knew, um, who had had his own clinic, and how he'd lost it all and wound up living in a tent. It was an hour after that I had my first panic attack because we had I taken out this big loan to make all this chocolate. <gasps> oh, I finally, I just phoned my husband. I said, just lie to me. Just lie to me and tell me this is going to be okay. <laughs> and he's like, well, it is going to be okay. <laughs> and I'm not lying. It's going to be okay. They're That's going so to be cool. able to figure out how to make that press. Right. Like if they've done it once before, they can do it again. Like this, this is not impossible. It's difficult. It is. It Yes. And to get the engineers to, right, for your job to be top of the list. And oh my gosh, it's in, being done in Quebec. So not everyone's first language that they're working in is English. Okay. <laughs> so, Probably a lot of French speaking. French speaking. Yeah. Yeah. The guy who answers the phone when we call is a salesman who speaks English. Um, but uh, I'm sure there's a lots of, lots of the moving parts at the company uh, move in various language and communicate that way. But they, they did after months and months and months, get the press going and produce the little cups and then we uh, had the factory make the chocolate bars again. And because in the meantime, people just constantly Facebook me and follow me for this bar, like thousands of people, which I've never gone through that kind of like this sudden fame that you had not anticipated having. You, you just want to get your mom some chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And your mom some chocolate and yours and yours. But I didn't expect you to all phone me and say, my grandpa's on dialysis and I have to have this chocolate bar. I don't have it, buddy. I have to wait for these people to make this cup. <laughs> you, so tell me, like, aside from the hands on. 
Aside from calling your husband to say, hey, honey, lie to me, make me sure I make me feel like it's going to be okay. How else did you navigate the stress of getting this this going? Um, I, I have um, music therapy that we use at my clinic on concussion patients. And I use, would use that sometimes. Um, prayer and meditation. Yeah, just that uh, turning the Facebook uh, alerts off on the phone. Hmm. <laughs> just don't want another alert from another person who needs it right now because I can't give it to them. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> and so um, yeah, eventually we eventually we caught up with demand, but that's taken that's taken years to do. So now we have a supply of them that we. Uh, keep in a warehouse and each time the grocery store orders a stack of them, they go off to the uh, office, uh, main office of the grocery store in question. So we've actually gotten ahead of it. And so that's why we're crazy enough to think that we could bring back another <laughs> bar. My yeah, I saw the commercial <laughs> for was it rum and butter. Rum and awesome. butter. Let me see if I have one here. Should okay. I grab one? That would have been yes. really together if I'd had one of these things here. Oh. So that that's my husband's uh, rum and butter bar. And you can probably tell from the package there yeah, that there's good. ooze inside. Ooh. That's rum and butter. So like that, you know, rum flavored ooze that you might pour over your those Christmas puddings that you oh, get. Take or something in there. Out. Yeah. Ooh. And it uh, was made here in Canada by Cadbury um, when my husband was a little boy and he loved to eat it. And it was uh, nixed and discontinued by Cadbury in 1996. So people hadn't had it for 25 going on. Yeah. 28 years. So yeah. we thought, well, that's another worthy project. I thought my husband had been such a marvelous dear about bringing back his mother-in-law's favorite chocolate bar. I thought, well, I'll bring back his favorite chocolate bar for yeah. him. And um, he did get quite a bang out of it because I, I, my husband was kind of a nerdy person. So not, <laughs> not exactly Mr. Social Savoir Faire cool guy at school yeah it's the nerdy one um and nerdy so, guys are the best. <laughs> yeah they are great <laughs> and so, so he'd not gotten to be the cool guy who like could hand out a chocolate bar to his friend that that everyone remembered and you couldn't get anymore like he'd never been able to do something like that and he had he had this inner fantasy of I hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> but he had this inner fantasy of being able to hand these chocolate bars out to uh, people. So um, he, I thought it would be cool to bring his chocolate bar to life. And how sweet is that to be able to want? And I, I should probably not use sweet in this particular. <laughs> it's very, very, very funny. Um, but like to be able to like share that nostalgia with everybody, like, that's a gift, like to put the smiles on people's faces from, and bring back 20 plus year old memories. Mm, mm -hmm. Like one radio show host, he, the, the cup, of course, as you peel the cup down, it makes a crinkly noise. So he's holding it up to the <laughs> microphone on the show. And he's like, people, can you hear that? That's the crinkly corners. <laughs> <laughs> so people have nostalgia for... Like people said to me, oh, pff, don't bother putting it in the red cup. Bring it back to the modern era, but pff, don't bother putting that cup on it. Are you kidding me? That is right, like the cup is a part of the experience. The sensory experience, the look, the sensory, the auditory, right? And frankly, functionally, it's all just a chocolate rectangle. So it run all down your hand and make a horrendous mess in the heat. And of course, back when it was invented, there was no air conditioning, right? Right. So as long so as you didn't go inside and hide while you eat your candy. Yeah. And the people could, it was Cuban lunch. People did take it in their lunch. So uh, it would sit in this cup if you were, say, driving tractor or truck um, at, all day. And you could eat this and it not run all down your hand. 
well, you know, ate it. So before you could, before the day of having your cab um, air conditioned. So you have chocolate that is cute, tasty, and functional. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, all those things, and it's and it's real chocolate because back in the olden days, we all ate things we thought were real chocolate in the seventies. It wasn't. No, a lot of oil. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't legally chocolate, so it was chocolatey. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now it is actually real, real chocolate. Yeah. That's got to be a huge point of pride to be able to bring it back. Like, what? how did you feel like when you got the first bar in your hand of the Cuban lunch? Oh, I was pretty excited. I, I would have gave us six of them to basically take the factory, did six of them up in the wrapper mm -hmm. to take and, and to take to stores and say, would you like to carry this? And the first place I took it was over to my dad's uh, condo and because it's right across the street from my house and showed it to him like and i'm just like well look at this you haven't seen this in 29 years or whatever and he reaches in like i was going to give him like you can't have that there's only six i said in existence <laughs> on the planet I, you can't have one <laughs> that's for safeway <laughs> i'm giving Aww. it to them so they can um be impressed enough to you know buy it or list it like they have to they have to have it to check the barcode and all this jazz put stuff in their computer you know all that technical yeah thing. The, the the back office piece before they can ever put it on the shelf <laughs> exactly so and 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 <laughs> Safeway actually listed it without tasting it they that so you talk about the look of it being right my friend they looked at that thing they of course remembered it when they were a kid it looked like it flipped it over entered it in the computer and listed it to be in safeway stores and they had not even tasted it wow so, yeah that, that speaks to the power of nostalgia it ha didn't cross their mind that that was not the right thing because it it well sure it is look at it there it is so yeah and that goes to show my graphic artist did a really good job of nailing that wrapper like which is hard because it's a clear wrapper like um kind of like a kind bar is in right clear oh so yeah that is super tough. tough it is because when you're designing it on a screen um all our screens have um, a white background right mm -hmm. so how do you show clearness right that an area is clear uh but it's there it's designed um so she'd put a brown screen background on it uh, wow. behind it so people see because of course with the brown chocolate that's what people were going to see and uh then she'd send it someone like the packaging company and show them okay this is what we want you to make and they go well what's the what's the brown part i, I thought i didn't know this wrapper was gonna be brown no it's not a brown design <laughs> it's not a brown wrapper the screen's gonna show a brown background so you can see the white white print on a clear wrapper really really a design difficulty in the modern day you yeah pull together a great team though how did you find your people hmm. it was not easy like finding the people to make the cups we basically just begged and begged our wrapper company to come up uh come up with that and they came up with that name for us after a while of really they they looked and looked for sources all over because here's something we've learned and this was four or five years ago now i think we've all learned this now in covid is that if a factory is making an essential good and it's doing a rock'em sock'em good job they don't need to advertise they don't need a website they got lots of clients right. <laughs> they got lots of work and they don't need you <laughs> and uh and so the factory that we've we found we had to basically be in, pr introduced to by someone with enough clout that they'd be willing to even take us as a client to even make those red cups so um that's wow. when we found that member of the team the wrapper company is a great little box company um and they are in washington state and british columbia and they are just great we were introduced to them by our factory our factory has sold from the family that owned it when we started with them. We found them by just 
cold calling factories to the end of time. <laughs> cold oh. called factories. Yeah. And cold emailed. Yes, both. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. For anybody that thinks cold calling is dead, you. Oh, no. It. <laughs> to be fair, to cold call and tell them about a brand they recognize, though, right? It's better than cold call and say, I want to make you this chocolate. You never heard of it. It's going to be great someday. Oh, bug off. You know, no. <laughs> That's true. I call, I advantage. say, I own this trademark that you absolutely know if you're over the age of 40, which by the time that you run a factory, you are over 40 generally. <laughs> you do. So, um, so yeah, we we cold called till we found our factory. Our graphic artist was a lady I knew, which is awesome. And she and her husband had sold their belongings and moved to Panama. And so she had maintained her graphic arts clients, anyone who she could still do from far away in Panama. So um she said, Okay, I'll I'll do you as a client. The, and of course, this was again pre-COVID when we all thought the pet petrochemical industry was dying and dead. So her petrochemical industry clients were disappearing on her. Oh. And so sure, move into food. I mean, we'll always need food, right? You will. So she designed our wrapper for us. So yeah, it was a it was a good team on hindsight of really excellent folks. You wow. go, you go a lot on the recommendations of the already excellent people in your life. So for example, the guy who drilled the holes to be larger. So the peanuts would go through at the factory. He was, um, some old retired fellow who he worked on the engines in the Vancouver airport, um, building, wow. building oh, engines. And he was like semi retired. And I don't think he, he didn't need our job. And, but when the head of our factory phoned him and said, they must have been buddies, and said, I want you to do this job, chip chop. He took that job. So, wow. So it, it's definitely a series of networking your connections, which is something I think women are uniquely blessed with a lot is, right? One relationship leads to another. And there's a network and it comes natural for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah it does connecting this is like an amazing journey though of like lots of twists and turns yes and no what would you say to somebody that was interested in going into the candy making business what would what did you wish you know you'd known when, when you got started wow there's kind of two segments to the okay. candy industry there's the stuff that's produced in large volume and the and it's kept at a low enough price that a lot of folks can afford it. Mm -hmm. That's there's that level of uh, candy and chocolate confection. And then there's artisanal creation confection, which there's loads of people expressing themselves all over the place. And <laughs> um, that is very very of the moment, very now, right? Right. Express yourself. Yeah. Express you, you, baby. Yeah. And that's groovy. But guess what? Someone else in the next street is just going to do themselves until we're all just doing our stuff. But I did something that wasn't, it wasn't me. It was a, a, an existing entity in people's hearts already. Right. So I tried to find out what do people want um, and fulfill that need. So those are the two different kind of ways you can go in, in, in candy. You can try to express yourself and then try to get a following to yourself of which there's heaps of people, right? That's the whole Instagram, right? Yeah. Try to get people follow me, 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 oh, me. Okay. Uh-huh. We can't all be, right? We can't we all, all be right that. Time. Yeah. And the world needs food at a reliable price. We're also learning that, aren't we? Desperately, because the price of like something as simple as an apple is way too high. <laughs> yes. So creating food that people can afford on their budget, um, I think that th there's value in that. I think um, there's especially a great sense of value in affordable food that is like enjoyable, the stuff that's like the treats and the snacks. 
the things that seem like luxuries when money's tight. Yeah. And yet it's a, such a small luxury. You can mm -hmm. still afford it. So, yeah. Yeah. So exactly. if people want to get a hold of your chocolate bar, where can they get it? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> they maybe should email me and I'll, I'll suggest a few um, online sellers if, if the person lives in the United States. Okay. If they live in Canada, um, just Amazon.ca. Uh, but the funny thing is, as soon as Amazon figures out that your computer is sitting in the USA, Amazon will not show you Amazon Canada stuff. No, no. Oh, can really? show you that. Oh, oh, no. So Amazon's got its own warehouses that are in the USA and where the food wouldn't have to come through customs to come to you. That's why they can be quick. Mm. Therefore, they won't show you the stuff that's on the other side of the border because that couldn't be quick. And Amazon's all about quick. So yeah. two days, are talking about that yeah. are in the factory in the States, they showed. And for a while we were in the U.S., but here's the funny thing about Amazon and chocolate. At some arbitrary date every spring, they tell all the chocolate, get the heck out of our factory. It's too warm to ship this product. And you've got to get out by that date because, again, Amazon is so powerful and so arbitrary. So <laughs> one year they kicked us out on April 15th. That's really so, early in the year. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think we've really bothered even being back in Amazon USA since. So um, if you have buddies who have access to Amazon Canada, you can get it. Or else uh, people can write me on one of the websites I think you said you would put up. And yeah, um, I'll suggest a few, yeah, a few online sellers in Canada that yeah, um, so. can sell uh, out of the country. So, yeah, if you, if you want to get in touch cubanlaunch.ca. That's right. Then then the, the, the contact us button on that website actually works because it's a pet peeve of mine of contact us pages where you just get ghosted after you write to them. Yeah, I've, just... I've been ghosted before. It's really painful. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, but I just wanted, wanted to know this one thing. <laughs> yeah, no, precisely. So yeah. cubanlaunch.ca, that's C-U-B-A-N-L-U-N-C-H dot c a yes i think if you did dot com it might work too but let's not uh let's not try it just go with dot c a <laughs> yeah. dot c a so is there anything that we haven't talked about you want to share more about well we do have a super secret operation where we Ooh. are um going to do our first american chocolate bar which is super scary because you know the states is a very big Right. You haven't made it anywhere until you made it there kind of thing. Right. <laughs> well, I think that you've done something amazing already making your husband's chocolate bar and bringing back the one for your mother. I mean, I think sometimes we define excellence and success by numbers. And a lot of times that's really like impact. And the fact that your mother is, is returned to a nostalgic place in the face of dementia is beyond powerful. Oh, it, 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 it's a tough, um, it's a tough point to reach inside that person. And if you're going to reach it this way, um, do we have time for a funny story? Yeah, so we do. We do. Okay. So um, I had a um, TV crew contact me and they we came up with this idea. We would go to my mom's care facility and we would go and take her around in her wheelchair and deliver them to some of the friends on her um, ward, on her floor there mm -hmm. at the nursing facility. And so I called to get permission to do this. And this is one or two managements ago. It's a totally different company running the place now, but no, this lady was not going to let me do that. She was all like, Oh no, first we'd have to interview everyone you're going to give it to and check them for peanut allergies. And then the, the nutrition team would have to meet, make sure it was appropriate. And then we the nutrition to team. Jeez. <laughs> and then, um, and then we'd have to contact their family and get permission because they're not their own, they can't give their own permissions. And then, blah, 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 and she put all this blockade up. So I tried that technique that will suck. This is what worked to pass my acupuncture exams. I tried crying. That does not work on women. Let me just say, <laughs> so that did not work. And so I finally just gave up and TV crew went and did something else that day. So a few months later, my dad is at my mom's care facility. He's looking for a knife in the drawer in the public kitchen area that they're allowed to use. He pulls it open. The drawer is full of my chocolate bars. My chocolate bars, like 
What? I, he's like, what's what? So he finds this gentleman that he knew in management, not the lady who told me no way, but another gentleman. He's like, there's an entire drawer full of those chocolate bars over here in the kitchen. And the, the guy says, oh, yeah, we use them as a greeting gift now for all new inductees to our nursing home. Oh, stop it. <laughs> like, uh huh, you do now. I see. You, I couldn't hand them out. Oh, heavens no. But you can give them to the new people who you don't really have a, a strong record on their allergies or anything. You want to impress them and say, you know, the woman whose family brought these back for her? That woman's in our care facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taste it. Mm -hmm. Real deal. <laughs> I'm like, oh, brother, you guys. Yeah, hit your, hit your wagon to my star on that to get really? people to come to your nursing home. <laughs> I would have never imagined that one, but that just is like proof that what you're doing is, is so great. People, you know, like they can't contain themselves around That's the chocolate. Right. So you've got to share. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we won't tell you we love it, but we do. <laughs> that that is an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing your journey to to becoming a chocolate maker and just the way that you love your family. I think is the the big takeaway here. Like that that's a lot of love to go through so much trouble to make sure that people's days are enjoyable and brighter. That's that's a lot of love, Crystal. Thank you. I think. I, I like to think everyone would do it if they could, right? And just no one else could do it. No one else figured out how. We just happened to be gifted that. <laughs> I think everyone would have, like the guy with his grandpa on dialysis, like, I mean, he drove across Alberta to get that chocolate bar for his great uncle or whomever that was. Like, he drove over and got some of our old kitchen samples and that and I couldn't even charge him for them because they weren't even commercial grade but he wanted to have those for his uncle on dialysis I I I like to think that of the world that everyone would do it if they could that's the kind of world I want to live in me too me too all right well everyone thank you so much for for watching career conversations crystal thank you for sharing the amazing story if you guys want to get your hands on some chocolate or get in touch with crystal cubanlunch.ca. Um, I'm sure she'd love to hear from you. And thank you all so much. Love y'all. Until next time, have a great week.